in his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to celebrate freedom on this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to be free in our mind, free in our spirit. Hallelujah. Free in our worship. Hallelujah. Come on. We're free. Come on. Let me, let me look, to, look to your neighbor and say, we are free. Come on. Let's declare we are free. Come on and clap. Hallelujah. We're going to go into worship. Hallelujah. and make some noise. Hallelujah. Make some noise. Hallelujah. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing louder than before. No more. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 praise hallelujah hallelujah we just celebrated freedom hallelujah we declared it out of our own mouth that we are free hallelujah how many truly believe you are free on today hallelujah hallelujah we serve an amazing god and he's worthy to be praised hallelujah let's begin to send up a worship to the lord on this morning hallelujah let's begin to think about all the things god have done and brought us out of we serve an amazing god hallelujah It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your love for me. Your love for me. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your sacrifice. Your sacrifice for me. For every blessing. For every blessing. Give unto me, yeah. Give unto me. For every valley. For every you used to strength I don't deserve your love. Your tender mercy. Now for your grace. Where I would I be? Oh, it's so amazing. Love for me, your love for me, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your, sacrifice your sacrifice for me, for every blessing, for every blessing, give unto me, yeah, give unto me, for every valley, for every valley. you used to shred. I don't deserve your tender mercy, not for your grace. Where would I, I stand amazed at your glory, and I stand amazed at your strength, and I stand amazed at his power, so amazing. Amazing, I stand amazed. Come on, I stand amazed. Yes, I stand amazed. So amazing, amazing. I stand amazed. Come on, I stand amazed. Yes, I stand amazed. Amazing, so amazing, 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 so amazing. God, you're amazing, yeah. You're so amazing, God. Amazing, amazing, so 
Shabbat the Lord, hallelujah. We serve an amazing God, hallelujah. He deserves all the honor, all the glory, all praises to him, hallelujah. Hallelujah, without God, where would we be, hallelujah. God, we owe God a hand clap for praise, hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. We're talking about Jesus Christ, hallelujah. The Holy One, the Chosen One, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we serve an amazing God, hallelujah. We just sung about how amazing our God is, hallelujah. Nobody is greater than God, hallelujah. God has all power in his hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on and clap your hands one more time. Oh, come on, somebody keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. We bless God on this morning. We bless God on this morning. Why don't you look at somebody and say, neighbor, today I am an AMP. Well, what does that mean? It says I'm an any moment praiser. Because at any moment, I think about how good God has been. At any moment, I think about how he saved my life. At any moment, I think about how he put food on my table. At any moment, at any moment, at any moment, at any moment, how about say, oh, God, we bless you. I'm an any moment praiser. How y'all my Shut your mouth. Oh God, we come to bless you on today. We come to bless you on today. We come to bless you on today. Have I say? Oh God, think about how good God has been to you on today. Oh, somebody ought to give God glory on this morning. You ought to give God glory on this morning. Hallelujah. 
we thank God for you visiting us on this morning. We want to say welcome to the Kingdom Church, a.k.a. the Love Church, under the leadership of Pastor Darius and Latoya Harris. We want to say thank you for visiting us this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad to see you on this morning. It's, glad to, it's good to be seen and not viewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to be seen and not viewed. So we want to say welcome, and we have a song on this morning, and we hope that you are blessed.
I can't just say that right for some reason. <laughs> Our pastoral anniversary, and, and me and Pastor Latoya, we decided, amen, to forfeit it for a greater need. Someone shout amen. 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 You know, also on today, you know, if, if it was in the past, I would be very excited because it's the start off of the NFL season. Amen, amen. somebody. So I would really be very excited, but I don't watch it as much, amen, as I used to because I don't have the time. But I just believe as the football season is kicking off and starting that there's some areas in your life that's about to kick off and start. I dare you to give God praise. If you believe some areas, amen, about to kick off and start in your life, in your faith, oh, you ought to give God praise all over the place. Come on, y'all to bless his name. You're, you're about to kick off into a new season. You're about to kick off into a new arena. Oh, y'all to give God praise. You give God praise, he just might bless the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. Come on, y'all to give God the glory. You, uh, Come on, somebody. Uh, y'all laughing at me. I can see all through those masks. Y'all to give God praise. You're, hallelujah. The ball's about to be in your hand. God's about to kick you off into a whole another place. Oh, y'all to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You didn't have praise season and you didn't practice now you in the game you ought to give God praise you in the game you in the game hallelujah glory be I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord hallelujah I don't know about y'all but I'm excited about today I'm excited there's a kickoff for a new season there's a kickoff for another dimension in your life there's a kickoff for some new things hallelujah oh y'all to give God praise all over the place hallelujah somebody give God glory Amen. I'm truly am excited, amen, about today what God is going to do. I'm excited what he's going to say. Hallelujah. Once again, we thank you all. Hallelujah. We give, let's give God praise, amen, for praise and worship, for doing a marvelous job, Hallelujah. and a welcome and the announcement. Come on, let's give him a great round of applause. Hallelujah. 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 Let's also thank God for our social media audience. Let's put our hands together for them as well. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. If you're tuning in, by the way, amen, of social media, we definitely do appreciate it. Amen. We definitely do appreciate it. Hallelujah. Amen. You, all you guys look good. Amen. And Amen. Give yourself a round of applause just for being in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone shout glory. You know, we're going to do a roll. We're going to do an aisle check. Amen. You know, we're we gonna do we're gonna do we're gonna do like a little a little little aisle check. You know, football oftentimes when the quarterback Amen. It's underneath the center. What he does, amen, he makes sure the crowd is involved because he knows when the crowd is involved. They don't got no crowd now. They got about 20,000 people there. But when the crowd is involved, amen, it, it, it throws off the defense. They can't hear their plays. They can't hear their signals. So, so what I'm going to do just for a second, I'm just going to put my mic down for a second. I'm going to see which side is the loudest because, amen, we need some help so, so the enemy can't understand his plays. So, uh, on my right side, your left side, let me. Y'all got a hard time, left side. Y'all got to tell. Come on, one more time. Let, let me be sure if that's for real. Come on, on my right side. Oh, y'all, y'all, I don't know if y'all can top that. Come on, on, on my left side. It, it's about a time. I can't call it. Amen. On my left side, one more time. All together, come on, let's give God praise and glory. Y'all over the place. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise and glory all over the place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, just begin to wave your hand. Just begin to open up your mouth. Just begin to tell of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for you. Come on, y'all, to give God praise all over the place. Y'all to thank him for his goodness and his mercy that endureth forever. The enemy wanted to take you out. Oh, I can't get no help, nobody. But God lifted up a standard against the enemy. When he tried to come in, like a flood, he lifted up a standard. Y'all to give God praise right now. Y'all to magnify his name right now. Y'all to thank him right now and honor his name. I dare just to give God praise just for about five, just for about two or three minutes, hallelujah, to show the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us. Come on, let's begin to open up your mouth. Begin to open up your mouth. Come on, shout. You ought to shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Sometime in order to get a miracle, it just takes a little bit of embarrassment. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. For me to be praising and worshiping like this, I promise you, it's outside of myself. Lose yourself in the Lord and just begin to put those hands together. Shout for joy. Oh, man, don't praise him like that, Elder Jones. Watch yourself. 
Castle just said that they look pretty. They don't, they don't like that tambourine like that, pal. I tell you what, that tambourine. Work that tambourine. <laughs> oh my God. You ought to give him praise. Watch yourself. Watch yourself, the lady from the, come on now. Me and no pray. No, that's a Holy Ghost rock. You ought to give God the glory. Put them hands together, children. Hallelujah. Even the little ones giving God the praise. Come on and praise his name. The enemy tried to weigh you down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but he don't know. You're confusing the enemy with your praise. Go on and confuse him with your praise. Go on and confuse him with your worship. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Extravaganza means fun. It means to be loud. It means to be exciting. It means to be, have exuberance. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Praise him. I dare y'all do just a clap like you in the Holy Ghost quack. I wish I could clap like medicine man right now, but. Bless his name. Hallelujah. We want to make it easy. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. Ain't going to be no turbulence. Come on and bless his name. Yeah. I dare you put your shoulders in it just a little bit. Put a little dip in. Go ahead on and bless his name. Yeah. Come on and praise him. I, all I need is one runner, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. I just need one runner. I just need one runner. No, don't make me run, too. I, I just need one runner. I do it. I let him run. I let him run for the, I just need one runner. Yup. I know y'all just ain't gonna let these two women run now. Come on. Y'all yeah, yeah, ought to give God praise. Y'all yeah, yeah, don't even know y'all got the victory for your family. Yeah. Glory be to God. Man, don't, don't make me look bad now. Come. I don't got no brother that'll run. A, a young man. The women, they, they took it. Y'all ought to give God glory. They took it, brother. You had your chance. <laughs> I mess with y'all. There they go. All right. Y'all watch out. Clear the space. He come big old line. Come on now. Yeah. He blocking for his wide, wide receiver, his quarterback. Come on. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. Y'all excuse me, but I feel led to do this, and we're going to move on. I promise you, we're going to move on. I just need five men right here. One, two, three. Spread out. Five men. One. That's one. No, right here. Turn around to the crowd, and I want y'all to do what I do. I need, I need three more brothers. It can be a young man. It don't matter. I need two. I need, I need two more. Come on up here, Jeremiah. You want to be a man? You're going to be a man today. Y'all spread out a little bit. I want y'all to do this. That means you blocking every attack. The enemy tried to come against your family. You blocking every attack. The enemy tried to want to come against the church, against the pastors. I dare just begin to block. I dare just begin to block. Because if you don't block, the quarterback can't throw. If you don't block right, the preachers can't preach right. Block, come on, block. Let the devil know you. You can't get through this line. You can't get to my quarterback. You can't get to my passers. You can't get to my wide receivers. You can't get 
to my sisters and my brothers. I know you're Pastor Troy, just begin to throw the ball. Just, just act like you're a quarterback for a second, Pastor Troy. She don't hear me. Pastor Troy, just throw the ball. Act like you're a quarterback and just throw the ball. You can throw it now because they blocking for just stuff. Hallelujah. Come on. Jeremiah, I dare you just run. Act like you're going to catch it. Throw the ball, Pastor Troy. Run like you're going to catch it. Throw it. Catch it, Jeremiah. Catch you. Man, that's a long way out. <laughs> Lock it, Elder. Lock it, Knight. Lock. You ought to pray this name. Hey. I was glad when they said it to me. Sister Asher, when I... Let us come into the house of the Lord. Yay! God, I love Jesus. He tried to depress you before you got here. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Y'all good, fellas. Thank y'all for blocking. Yeah, amen. He, he can't get through this elder wood. He can't. He can't, he can't get through this praise like it's too thick for the devil. Depression can't penetrate it. Oppression can't penetrate it. Yeah. Hey Amen. We're about to move on. I just, hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's how you praise him, baby. That's how you praise him, baby. My That's how you praise him, girl. That's how you praise him, baby. That's how you praise him, baby, y'all. That, that bless my heart, Elder. <laughs> my God Almighty! Yeah! This generation gonna be all right. Somebody hold up the bloodstained banner. Yeah, we gon' Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all messing up things. Hallelujah. Come on and thank the Lord. Come on and give God praise. Yeah. My legs so because I done a little leg work out the other day, but God, I just Come on and glorify. Hallelujah. It worked for my grandma. It worked for my parents. It worked for my bishop. Praise works. Praise works. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on. There's victory in your praise. There's a miracle in your praise. There's deliverance in your praise. You're coming out by your praise. Come on and bless his name. Hey! Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put those sanctified hands together. Give God glory and praise all over the place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, begin to open up your mouth. When the music's out, when it's real, you see you got to praise on your lip. You still got a praise in your mouth. Father, we thank you. Glory, we thank you, Jesus. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're blessed. You're blessing. You're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. As we continue to move forward, I, amen, I, I, I want to thank God, amen, for these two I'm going to introduce who's going to come with a 
a powered up word. Someone shout power up word. Amen. As we have our vision fund extravaganza, I want to introduce them both at the same time. They're going to come back to back after each other. Amen. And I just have the privilege and the distinct honor. Y'all can rest on your feet just for a second. Amen. If Hallelujah. To, to introduce our first power up speaker going to be Minister Jasmine Ware. Y'all give a great round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We call her flow because she always on the flow worshiping God during some point within at least once every three services. Amen. So, so if she didn't do it two weeks, the third week, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee she's going to be on the flow by the drums tearing up something. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and our next power of speaking, none other than Elder Troy Wood. Y'all give him a great round of applause. I can tell you one thing about this man. He know how to pray and he know how to uphold the wall. Somebody shout amen. When you see him over there on that right wall, like you said, Elder, you best believe the devil about to back up. Come on. Hi. Somebody give God praise for Elder Troy Wood. Hallelujah. But at this time, amen, our first speaker is going to be Minister Jasmine Ware. Y'all give a great round of applause as she come. Come on. Hallelujah. Y'all give a great round of applause as she come. Can we praise God on today? He's an awesome God. Come on, he's faithful, God. Come on, I don't hear nobody. I'm not excited. He's an awesome God, and he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah, worthy to be lifted. Hallelujah, it is an honor and a privilege to be before you all on today. I promise I will not be before you long, amen, but I do believe that God is going to have his way, amen. So as you're standing, can we give a hand clap of praise to our leaders, Pastor Darius and Latoya Harris? Come on, they made, they sacrificed their pastoral for us to build the vision, amen. Come on, hallelujah. What kind of leaders are those? Those are some awesome and great leaders. Amen. Keep clapping those hands as we give God praise for our bishop, Dr. Todd M. Hall. Amen. Come on, the elders, the ministers of this house. Come on, keep clapping. Don't get tired. Amen. 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 Give a hand clap for yourself on today. You made it. Amen. And last but not least, hallelujah, but the best of them all, give it up for Jesus. Our Lord, our Savior, our King, hallelujah, he's an awesome God and he's worthy. Amen. As we go into prayer, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this word that you're going to birth out of my mouth on today, God. I pray that your spirit will rise, oh God, and that my flesh sits down, oh God. Have your way, open up the ears of your people to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. So on today, we are going to be talking about vision and division. Somebody say vision and division. Amen. So as we go into the word of God, I want to start out with one question. Amen. And that question is, are you a vision carrier or are you a vision barrier? I'm going to give you all a little bit of time to think about that. I'm going to ask one more time, are you a vision carrier or are you a vision barrier? Amen. Are you here to help fulfill the vision that God has placed or did you come to block the vision? Amen. What category are you in on today? Amen. And the title of my message, I'm going to give it early so it'll make sense all at the end, but the title of the message on today is a vision that God made whole cannot be split in half. Amen. And the subtitle on today is God Move My Lightweight. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you will, turn your Bibles to Habakkuk 2 and 2. Amen. That's Habakkuk 2 and 2. Amen. Habakkuk 2 and 2. This is a familiar scripture that we all know, the majority of us. Amen. And it reads, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. Amen. So in this text, God is given an answer. God is giving us divine instructions. Amen. So God said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. Amen. So in other words, what God is saying, I need you to copyright this vision that I'm giving you. I need you to make a blueprint for the vision that I have placed inside of you amen and you got to make it plain and the reason for this is so that there's not any confusion amen when God gives you that vision whenever other people read it they can't conjure up their own interpretation amen so you got to make it plain amen like for example I could say go buy a car 
Minister Amos might want a Lexus. Elder Jones might want a Cadillac. Everybody will get their own interpretation, so you got to make it plain. Somebody say, make it plain. plain. Amen. And then the next part of that scripture, it says, and then it says that he may. Amen. So I'm going to stop right here because we missed that word may, that he may. Amen. And the word may means an expressing possibility. So the Bible, it never said that whoever read it, that they will run with it. It never said that they shall run with it. It says that they may run with it. And so because it says that they may, that means that there's a possibility that they may not. Amen. And so this lets me know, hallelujah, that just because a person reads your vision, that does not mean that they're going to run with your vision. Just because a person is reading what God has placed in your hands, that does not mean that they're going to help you build it. Amen. They may or may not be accountable. They may or may not be about their word. Amen. They may or may not show up. They may be faithful. Then again, they may not. They may participate. Then again, they may not. They may pay their tithes, but then again, they may not. They may be consistent, but then again, they may not. So may means it is a expressing possibility. So we have to understand that everyone that comes in our life, they may or may not fulfill the vision that God has placed on the inside of us. So I want to go back to the beginning. Are you a vision carrier or a vision barrier? So a vision carrier is someone that holds the vision. Not only do they hold the vision, but they are a transporter for the vision. That means that they cause things to move, amen. When you think about a mail carrier, they carry the mail. They go and they deliver, amen. And so as a vision carrier, you are a transporter of the vision, amen. You help deliver the vision, amen. And the Holy Spirit gave me an acronym for DELIVER, amen. And DELIVER, it stands for a determined employee laboring for impactful vision engaged results. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time so y'all can get it. Deliver stands for a determined employee that is laboring for impactful vision engaged results. So let me break it down. Amen. You are employed by God and you are determined. When you're determined and you got the vision on your brain, you can't sleep. When you're determined, employed by God and the vision is on your mind, there's something in your spirit that tells you I got to keep moving. Amen. And when you're laboring for something that's impactful, you're laboring for something that you want to see a change in. You're laboring, for, hallelujah, not just to be laboring, but you're laboring for a change. Amen. And it's that vision engaged results. That means I'm trying to get results that are involved with the vision. Amen. I'm not just out here doing this just to be doing it. Amen. So a vision carrier, amen, they know how to get the job done. A vision carrier, they have been sent and employed by God to help fulfill the vision. Amen. Now the job of a vision barrier is to prevent movement or access. A vision barrier has one assignment, and that assignment is to stop the vision, amen. That one assignment is to cause the vision, amen. So in the word division, you have die and then you have vision, amen. That means you have a split, amen, vision. That means you got two vision. It's your vision, then it's my vision, amen. It's your way, and then it's my way, amen. And because they have a split vision, they will never be able to focus on the vision. And this is the difference or the main difference between a vision carrier, amen, and a vision barrier, amen. Hallelujah. Because of the type of vision that a vision carrier has is tunnel vision, amen. And a lot of times when you think about tunnel vision, people say that it's a vision impairment. But actuality, it actually helps you, hallelujah, depending on how you focus, amen, and your way of doing things. And so a vision carrier, they have tunnel vision. And what I love about tunnel vision is that all you can see is what's in the middle. All you can see is where you got to go. All you can see is where you got to get to. All you can see is where you got to make it. Hallelujah. And everything else around it is clear. So when a distraction comes, I don't even see it because it's out of my view. When somebody try to get me off a course, I can't even see it because it's not in my view. All I can see is where God is trying to take me. All I can see is what God is trying to have. Hallelujah. And make in my life. Vision carrier, vision barrier. 
Amen. All I can see is what's in the middle. All I can see is exactly where I got to make it. Amen. But a vision barrier, they have split vision. Amen. That means they have double vision. They got their eyes at two places at the same time. Amen. But in Habakkuk 2 and 3, amen, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Amen. But at the end, uh, it shall speak. Hallelujah. And it will not lie. Hallelujah. And though it tarry, the Bible says that you are to wait on it hallelujah because it was surely i said it was surely it will surely come amen and it will not tarry so i want to let you know on today hallelujah that a vision that god made whole it cannot be split in half hallelujah it cannot be broken up in half hallelujah so god i need you to handle our white our lightweight oh okay? god pick up the barriers oh okay? god get all the blockades out of the way oh okay? god move it out of the way oh god so we can build the vision somebody say handle my light way god move any vision barriers oh god that's blocking the kingdom church on today oh god move it out of the way oh god move it out of our lives oh god amazing grace how sweet the sound oh god how sweet the sound of victory will be oh god how sweet the sound it'll be when we cross the finish line oh god though the vision terror we ought to wait on it hallelujah we got to be ready when the vision comes hallelujah like a flood. The Spirit of God will lift up a standard. He will lift it in Jesus' name. Can't no voodoo stop it. Can't no witch block it. Can't no warlock come against it. Can't no curse come against it. Can't no COVID come against it. Can't nobody up in here come against it. It will come to pass. Hallelujah, Jesus. Though the vision tarry, God said, wait on it. Though the vision barriers may come, hallelujah, you might be sitting beside one right now. Though they may come, hallelujah, the weapons will form, but they will not prosper. They will not prosper. And as a body of Christ, we have to stay unified in God. We have to stay unified with our assignments. We have to stay unified with our praise, hallelujah, because as we stand unified, there's nothing that can come in between it. There's nothing that can come in between what God wants to do in our life, hallelujah. you have so be a vision carrier and not a vision barrier y'all put your hands together that was powerful that was powerful hallelujah made me check myself hallelujah well if I had to give y'all my title it's called so y'all don't take this personal. You don't take this Don't take Get back in position. <laughs> See, when people are out of position, when people are out of position, there's no authority. There's no alignment. So people are out of alignment right now because they're doing what they want to do. If we really go back to when COVID really started, I was at, at TJC, March tonight. It was spring break. People did not come back to August the 24th. People did not even come back to church. So it's been going on for that long. But I don't understand, and I'm going to get to my scripture. I don't understand. You can go to the hospital with COVID, but you won't come to the house of God to get ill. You'll go where it's at, but you won't come to the church. You'll go to Walmart. You'll go to Walmart. You'll go to Super One. You'll go to all the stores, but I ain't going to church. Where your faith at? Where your help at? He, he ain't took you out yet. He's still letting you make money. So why you can't see about him? I'm going to come from the book of Haggai, chapter 1. And we're going to talk about three people. We're going to start at verse 2. It's going to sound kind of unorthodox the way I'm going to bring it. But at the end, you're going gonna, gonna, gonna to understand why we got to have church. Because it ain't the way y'all think it's going to be. But there's three men that the prophet Haggai had to talk to. It was the king Darius. There was another man by the governor of Judah by the name of Zerubbabel. There was a priest. They called him in Hebrew, Joshua, but his name was Joshua. He was the son of Joseph. Yeah. Amen. But what I liked about God was, what I'm going to do, I'm going to approach the three people that is important before I talk to everybody else. Because if the head ain't in order, everybody else is going to be out of order. So what God did is, Hagar sent God, sent God sent Hagar to talk to the three most important people. The king, the governor, 
the pastor. If I bring it here now, the president, the governor, and your pastor. See, if your church ain't got a vision, you need a prophet that's got a vision. If you ain't got no prophet, you can't see where you're going. Amen? Now, this is going to mess you up the way I read it because what messed me up about Hagar, Hagar was born when they was in captivity. They was in captivity 590 B.C. But they got released in captivity 536 B.C. But they didn't go. They For 16 years, they did not go to church. 520 B.C., 16 years without church. That's why Hagar had to go. But what I liked about Hagar, the word Hagar means festive, encourager. So what he's saying is, even though you was in captive, I was sending you to get the captives free. You got to have somebody in your family that's been through bondage, that's been on the other side of the track, that's been in poverty, that get you out of the poverty. You can't talk to rich people. You got to talk to somebody that's been dealing with what you've been dealing with. That's why he went to Hagar. Hagar was inspired. And I, I know I talked about the word error. He gave him another word error. This stands for attitude, influence, respond. If you give the right attitude, you influence people to respond. That's why he gave it to Hagar. Hagar had the right attitude to influence the people to respond. You cannot holler at the people and think they're going to do it. You can't threaten folks and think they're going to do it. I don't care about you got problems at your house. I, I got problems at my house. You can't make me do something I don't want to do. If it ain't God, you ain't going to change my mind. If it ain't God, I ain't sowing. I don't care what you say. I understand you need money, but you got to make sure that you say it with the right attitude. Threats, threats don't work with me. Matter of fact, threat will make me get up and say, you know what, I'm going to leave. I, I take my money somewhere else to go. Amen. All right. Elder Joe, so what are we going to do? We're going to read verse 2. Elder Joe going to read verse 2, 3, and 4. We're going to skip 5 and read 6 and 7. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to skip 5 so y'all understand. Go ahead, Elder Joe. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, uh -huh. This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Now, they got a lot of nerves to tell God what they're going to do. Been captain 16 years. I ain't going to church. I know some people right now have been out since COVID-19 and said, told God they ain't going to church. Go ahead, Elder Joe. Then came the word of the Lord uh -huh. by Haggai, the prophet said. Yeah, yes, sir. It, it is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your in your houses. Uh-huh. And this house lie waste. Wait a minute now. What you have to understand, this is what messed me up. Moses had a t what I call a tent ministry. The tabernacle, the holy covenant, they carried it everywhere they go. Moses did more miracles when they was in the tent ministry than they did when they was in the church. Some of y'all were powerful, but when you got your title, you forgot who you was. I don't understand that you spent 16 years to get what you wanted to be. Then when you get what you want, you turn your back on God. This is why he was mad. They were building the second temple. They wanted it to look like King Solomon Temple. The Babylonians came and made them slaves. Then they released them to the Persians. The Persians told them, go do whatever y'all want to do. The first thing they saw about was their house. I know y'all thinking about 1 Timothy 3 and 5. If a man can't take care of his own house, how shall he take a house of God? This ain't the scripture. This ain't the scripture for this one. I got the right scripture for this one, but this ain't the scripture. The reason ain't the scripture, how you going to bend to God for 16 years? Don't tell me about your house. When you going to see about God's house? When nobody cleaning the toilet. There was no choir rehearsal, no intercessory prayer, no children ministry, no feeding the poor. Everybody was seeing about the own house. Even the priests were seeing about his own house. See, I understand Facebook media. They talk and look at it, but they didn't have it back then. But my question is, if we ain't here, who y'all going to look at? Somebody got to be at the church. As Bishop would say, brick and mortar. Amen. So, okay, let's go to six, Elder John. We skip it five, go to six. So much. Uh oh. And bring in little. Come on. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Oh, you hungry now? Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Alcohol. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. Talk. And that earns wages, earns wages to put it in into a bag with holes. Now watch this. Sixteen years out of church, you can't say they was unemployed because they were eating. So. 
The best way to fix a bag with a hole in it, you got to start sewing. See, it won't do good to get another bag because another bag going to get a hole. Do you have a whole bunch of holy bags? Or should I call them holy rags? Because when they get a hole in it, you know how we would get some hole? Well, I'm going to clean with this one. Now, watch this. The reason the bag got a hole in it, because they was holding on to their money. So the bag got heavier and heavier and heavier to it. Got a hole. But if they would have sold, the bag would have never ripped. I don't understand for all these people that's drawn up, that drew all this money during this pandemic. You couldn't find time out to sow back to God. You couldn't find time to sow back into the church. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to go work like that and keep it for myself. God was upset. 16 years. They ain't gave nothing. Now, read verse 7. Now, I'm going to explain to you why they read 5. Thus says the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. consider your ways. Reason I didn't say five, five said the same thing. And within seven sentences, God don't remind them Negroes twice. Well, let's consider your ways. They didn't care. Yes, man, I'm sorry. Sorry. The African Americans, the people, I'm going to pay for this one. This might be my last time. <laughs> Y'all better enjoy this one. The rebuke don't feel good. Amen. But anyway, he sat there and told them for 16 years, what's wrong with your heart? In the book of Proverbs 16 and 1, we get close to the end, I promise you. In the book of 16 and 1, it says, the preparation of a man's heart and the answer of his tongue is from the Lord. If you prepare in your heart to give, God will give the answer how to give. But if you never prepare to give, God ain't going to give you no answer. See, they would never worry about God how they worry about their house. This is my question. Why would you expect God to keep blessing you, but you won't bless his own house? Nowhere in the scripture. I went back and studied. Nobody prayed. What if God had turned his back on them? See, what they really could have happened, we got to understand. I'm going to show the difference between called and chosen. Chosen people can do anything. I'm mean, called people can do anything and nothing happen. Called people can do one thing, and they're in trouble. See, Zerubbabel, and Joshua were chosen. That's why God said, y'all ain't going to get away with this because you're chosen. I don't care how much you neglect. You can try to run from God. You can stay away for 10 years. You can go do whatever you want to do. But when it's your time, he's coming to get you. That's why they couldn't get away because they was chosen. I'm going to say this and folk going to get mad. Chosen people ain't got no business hanging out with called people. Because you keep hanging around called people, they're going to call you out of your position. They ain't going to lift you up. They're going to call you out of your position. They're going to make you think that your pastor is wrong. They're going to make you think, you make you think all the members are talking about you. They're going to make you think all the women in the church. They're going to make you think the women in the church want you. Every time you go to somebody's church, did you see how he was looking at you? I think she won't. You. you have you so confused, you won't even know who you was. Chosen people. Can't listen to call people. Now watch this. I'm going to flip it. First and nine, Elder Jones, then we're going back to eight. Watch this. He gonna tell you why. You look for much. Uh oh. And lo. Come on. It came to little. Uh huh. And when you brought it home. Yes, sir. I did blow up on it. Wait a I, minute. Go ahead. Says the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man in his own house. God said he blew in that money. That was not the devil. You know how it is. Well, that's my car tour. That was the devil. When was the last time you paid your tithes? Now, I'm going to straighten this up right now. This is the scripture that applies to this message. Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Yes, you have. In my tithes and offering. That's why he was robbing them. Because he tired of them not taking care of his house. Malachi 3 and 8. It didn't say for 16 years nobody paid no tithes. 16 years. That's why the money kept coming out. Blowing. Now, we're going to go home. Watch this, Elder Joe. Read verse 8. I'm going to show y'all why we got to go to church. I'm going to explain to you why we got to go to church. Go up to the mountain. Uh-huh. And bring praise wood. The, praise and worship. Let's go. And build the house. Okay, we got an altar. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. The reason God wants us at the church 
is to be so he can be glorified. Not for somebody to get a new. I know we get blessed with houses, but I've been thinking since it's hit Sunday and Wednesday, Wednesday and Sunday, praise and worship been up here going at it hard, right? There's a lady in the, in the, in the, in the choir by the name of lady, Shatarius, Baron, right? When it hit, don't she be over here? High blowing. Then it hit, then Minister Jazz turned into a lion. And I said, get on up. Uh, let's praise God and be going off. Then all of a sudden, you see Lady Davino walking on feet like she's chopping onions. Then all of a sudden, the atmosphere started changing. Then all of a sudden, Pastor Toya get her tambourine quartet together. <laughs> then we start feeling the glory. Then all of a sudden, Pastor Darrell do something that everybody thinks unorthodox. Uh, he was sitting like this. What he's doing, he's stirring up the spirit. Then he take his left hand and pull the glory down. Then when he do that, uh, this thing start working. So what I have learned, uh, when you're in God's glory, you will get healed. When you're in God's glory, folks will be set free. When you're in God's glory, death will be rebuked. Uh, when you're in God's glory, you get promotion. I seen folks blessed. I seen folks set free. I seen COVID take back. I seen folks delivered. I seen promotion. I seen God walk over. I seen healing. Even I embrace the healing. I thank you right now. The that's why we got to have church. We got to have prayer. We got to have exhortation. We got to have preaching. We got to have praise and worship. We got to have child's ministry. We got to have outreach. That's why we got to have church. So God can be glorified. I'm through. Come on, y'all put your hands together for these two great, come on, ministers. Come on, who done a marvelous job. Come on, let's thank God for them. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise for him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together for him. Hallelujah. Amen. They've done a marvelous job as our choir, amen, is preparing, amen, to minister and give us a selection. Hallelujah. They've done an awesome job, awesome, a great job. Y'all give them another great round of applause. Let's show them our love and our appreciation. Hallelujah. Just a brief recap as the choir is coming, amen. Minister Jasmine said that, that God wants you to copyright your vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Just don't write it down, but somebody shout copyright it, copyright it. Because people will steal your stuff out there. You better copyright it. Come on, somebody. Holly. They, they'll steal your stuff and take credit. Come on. And they'll act like they came up with it all they own, on their own. Elder Wood said, since you've been in, cap in captivity, God will cause you to set the captive free. Y'all ain't put your hands together. Hallelujah. And some of you have been in some type of captivity in your life, and he said numerous other things. God will cause you to be a deliverer. Y'all put your hands together, amen, for the words, amen, that they spoke on today. Done a marvelous job. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. We're excited as we continue to go further in the service as our, as our kingdom voice is preparing, amen, to, to sing. How many of y'all been enjoying yourself so far? I told y'all, if y'all praise God, we just might have a good football season, amen, and y'all tripping, y'all are hurting the Cowboys right now, so I dare y'all to give God praise, God might hear our prayer, come on, I know it's a lot going on, but I, I dare you just begin to give God praise and honor and worship, hallelujah, it's going to kick off a new season for your life, hallelujah, somebody said, I'm in a new season, somebody said, I'm in a new season, I'm in a I'm in a new place. I'm in a better place. I'm in a better place in my mind. I'm in a better place in my marriage. I'm in a I'm in a better place in my finances. I'm in a I'm in a better place in my soul. I'm in a better place in my body. If you believe you're in a better place, I dare yes, begin to open up your mouth and give God praise for your better place. Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Amen. We're excited. Amen. You guys done a marvelous job. Amen. You held it down. You just didn't held, hold, held it down, but you held it up. Holding it down one thing, but holding it up is another thing. Hallelujah. Amen. They had 10 minutes, and they found a way to put that all in 10 minutes. Come on. You know how tough that is when you have a whole lot in you. You have a whole lot in you to succeed, get, to be obedient within 10 minutes. Amen. That deserves a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. But we have the honor and privilege, amen, to introduce, amen, our kingdom voices. And what we're going to do, we're going to. Amen. Merge it together. Amen. I want to, amen, give God praise, and I want to, amen, introduce this woman of God, and right, amen, after I introduce her, the choir going to sing, and she's going to, amen, be the next voice you hear. But I thank God for Pastor Latoya. How many of y'all thank God for Pastor Latoya? Come on, do better than that. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I, I just don't thank God for the anointing because you can find anointed people, but sometimes anointed people don't like to work. Amen. I thank God just not she's highly anointed, but I thank God she loves to work in God's kingdom. Yes, yes. She don't mind working for you. She don't. I can't get no help, nobody. Amen. She don't mind pouring in. She don't mind taking out the time. And I thank God that, that she's just been, amen, so fluent and just so relevant as not just ministering in God's kingdom, in God's house, but also doing the work of the ministry. How many of y'all coffee and me have been a true blessing to y'all? Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. And we also thank God, amen, for the portion, I believe, the rough draft of the, another book that's coming out. Y'all give God praise for hallelujah. Amen, who spent time, amen, reading and researching and doing the very best that she can and doing due diligence, amen, to make sure that she's continued to remain relevant in, it, in every area of her life. I just want y'all to point your hands to the woman of God. Say, Pastor Latoya. Pastor Latoya. Say, preach the, preach the word. Say, Pastor Latoya. Pastor Latoya. Say, teach the, teach the word. Say, demonstrate the word. Demonstrate Say, the word. operate in the word. Operate. Say, I believe, I believe. My, release my release is in your mouth. Come on, y'all give God praise for a hallelujah. And at this time, we're put into our hands of our kingdom voices. Y'all give God praise as they come at this time. Come on, y'all. Y'all put your hands together. Come on. We're not going to just go down it like that. Put them hands together. Come on. This is Vision Sunday. To me, it's Victory Sunday. Because all the steps, step legs, and everything that Tabor tried to do against us, he did not work. So come on. Everything that happened to us, always, always remember, it was for your good. Here we go. Then try it. Now, say it's going to work. Yet he slayed me, yet I will trust him. It's going to work. He always had my back in time of trouble. He's going to work. For your good. It's going to work. The goal is what it seems like. It's going to work. <laughs> when I was homeless and by myself, God always made a way out of no way. For your, For your good. Put your going to work. It's going to work. Put your hand on it right here. Put your weight on it. It's going to work. It's going to work. Go on. It's going to work. It's going to work. All right, y'all. Come on. It's going to work.
trusting God has in my life. Everything, every problem, every mission, every deliverance, every healing, everything, 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 everything. I'm glad. Come on. Fire your good. Fire your good. When I'm home in the streets. For your good. If it looks bad right now, then for your good. It's strengthening you right now. It looks big right now. God has your plan for you. God has a plan for you. For your good. For your good. For your good. I'm glad. Come on. For your good. They stop getting too much for him. No, he's slaving. No, he's slaving. No, he's slaving. No, he's slaving. Get out. Get out. Trust you, Lord. Trust you, Lord. Hey. 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 today for your good for your good for your good look at this town victory 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 Victory! Victory! Wave them, wave them! Wave them, wave them!
lose a baby over a month ago that she was carrying and coming to hustle God with a praise still on her lips and in her hands, I know there's somebody that still got a praise. Here we go. Ah, for you are good. For you are good. It didn't feel good, but it's for you all good. It didn't feel right, but it's for you all good. While you're yet standing, let's give the choir a great round of applause. Come on, shout it's for your good. It didn't feel good, but it's for your good. Tap your neighbor and tell him, say, everything you went through. Tell him, say, I know you don't believe it. I know, I know you can't receive it, but... Tell your neighbor that you drove with, that you rode with, and tell them, say, it's for your good. Well, how can you say that, Pastor Latoya? I can say it because the Bible says that all things work together. The good, the bad, and the ugly, all things work together for your good. Can't explain it. Come on. Can't explain the miscarriage. Can't explain. Come on certain things, losing things, but all of it is working together for your good. Hallelujah. While you're yet standing in the presence of the Lord, because somebody could have lost their mind. Matter of fact, somebody could have questioned God and gave up, but we serve a mighty God. And it's amazing how God can turn your pain into praise. While you're standing, I don't have a lot of time. I have less than 30 minutes to get out what I need to say because there's a lot that already has been said, and I need not to be redundant. Amen. While you're standing in the presence of the Lord is here, let's thank God, amen, for our man of God, Pastor Darius Harris. Y'all can do better. Y'all can do better. Amen. I'll talk about him in just a moment. Let's thank God for our wonderful Bishop, Dr. Todd M. Hoss. And today I also want to give great praise and deverence to, amen, my mother, Pastor Janice Thompson. For I am her natural seed, and my husband and I, we're also a spiritual seed of what she has sown and that what is growing. And so, we're so grateful that God has given us a spiritual mother and a spiritual father. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to hold you hostage, but somebody is praising God, and we don't let people praise alone. I remember since she's still praising, and this is not a part of my notes, but I remember some months back, if y'all were here in this service, and she was sitting on the second or third row, and I told her I didn't know what was going on with this baby. I didn't even know she was pregnant. I said, I don't know what's going on with this baby, but God says you're birthing forth praise. And it's amazing since I've experienced 14 miscarriages how sometimes the word don't make sense when it's said. And we have questions and to hear a word and a few weeks later, lose the child God told me he said I'm still God he said the word is still correct he said because I'm birthing for a praise out of her y'all don't want he said I'm birthing forth Judah he said that situation is gonna make her praise God I know it ain't your situation he said but that that situation is gonna make her praise God forever 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 you may not understand until you lose one. You may not understand. But we are to take people's issues and things that they go through seriously. 
because it messes with your mind. Amen. And even those of y'all here today, you've been through things that mess with your mind. Amen. So I want to take the time and take just about a minute and a half to talk a little bit about Pastor Harris. And are y'all okay with that? She can keep praising. She's not bothering me. She might be bothering y'all, but she's not bothering me. Um. <laughs> this has been happening, y'all. No, this has been happening. This has been happening. This has been happening. This has been happening. If I were you, I wouldn't miss God. We, we have not been laying hands on anybody. And so our prayer was during COVID-19, Lord, touch the people. And God has amazingly been doing a job that we cannot do in these services. And so we can't plan them. If you're glad that God just brought you this far, you ought to pray. If you're glad that God just brought you this far, some of y'all survived COVID-19, and, and, and some of y'all, God is causing you to still survive and outlive. COVID-19 hadn't touched your houses, your family, and you're still here, and we owe him a praise. It's because of him that we live and we move and we have our being. It's because of him that we breathe. It's because of him that we have the activities of our limbs. It ain't the Clorox. It ain't just the mask. It's not just the procedures that we do. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a worship zone. It's 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 a worship zone. Come on. Depression cannot stay in this atmosphere. Oppression cannot stay. This is a worship. Not asking for houses, cars, and more money, but this is a worship zone that we worship you for who you are. Some of y'all been through enough to drive you crazy. And God, we bless you today. And we thank you today. And we give you glory. That's it. Amen. 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 If someone could help our children's ministry, that would be great. But keep worshiping God. Please keep worshiping God. Keep worshiping God. Keep worshiping God. Wednesday night, this happened for about 30 minutes. And all we could do was worship him. Because if it had not be for the Lord on my side. Can I get a little more volume? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had Y'all believe that? Not been for the Lord on my, my side. Tell, it's personal. Tell me where. Probably be in Rust State Hospital. Would I be? Where would? I be. Why? 
He kept my enemies away. He put the sunshine in a cloudy day. I had a lot of them. Oh, he wrapped me in the cradle of his arms. I wish I can sing it like I feel it. Not been when he kept us during the wreck a few months ago. For the Lord on our side, tell me where, I can tell you where, would I be where would I be? They not having church like this no more. But when he healed Lady Marsha and when he healed Elder Knight and when he healed Mother, come on, come on, Mother Pink. Where would I be? He could have been six feet under. Where would I be? When my enemies came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. We got to give God his time, saints. We got to give him his time. Not our programs, not our events, not our plays, but we got to give God his time. I'm going to try to move on. That sounds good. That sounds good. It sounds good. Guests and visitors, ride with us. Just worship. Visitors and friends, Facebook Live, and those tuning in, just go with us a few seconds. For he kept my enemies away. He put the sunshine in a cloudy day. I remember the days. He wrapped me in the cradle of his arms. Because he knew I, I had been and strong. Yes, sir, single. This the old church. Get him a mic. This is the church I grew up in. Listen, I add all them extra rows in there, but they, they sang it the right way. Where would I be? Listen, while we're here, the word has been spoken. I have a few words to say to you for time's sake, but while we're here, the Lord brought back to my remembrance that we need to be careful about who we choose to partner with. We've been talking about that. We need to be intentional about who we choose to connect with. We need to be intentional about who we choose to be married to. And I'm, I'm so grateful that God allowed me to be married to not just a man, not just a nice looking man, but a prayer warrior, a praying, come on, man. God gave me a flashback. You may be seated. Um, in the presence of the Lord, he gave me, if you're still worshiping, just worship. A flashback this morning, and one of our daughters had a dream to um, actually concur with what um, God showed me. And when we had our wreck, um, we came to church that same morning, y'all remember? And um, those of y'all who experienced traumatic wrecks, y'all know what it does to you mentally and what it does to you um, physically, and just the fact of you walking out without any scratches or anything like that is a miracle. However, we came out in public, we kept coming to church, but at home I was having some private issues uh, with my body, my back, my neck, my feet kept swelling and things of that nature. Didn't know why. The doctor said maybe you're not moving around as much as you usually move around because you're in pain. And I remember one morning um, I was just out of there in my mind and even in my body and 
Uh, my old mother rose up out of Pastor Harris at his sleep, and he got over on the other side of the bed, and he started speaking in tongues and going up and down my legs. I hadn't told him anything that I was thinking. I didn't tell him anything about the swelling in my legs, and he started going up and down speaking in tongues. And he said, I don't know what God is doing, but God said, remove it. We remove anything, any heart attack, any stroke, any blockage, any anything. And I'm I, the reason I'm saying that is because we look at people and we – we want a certain thing, but what you really need is to be connected to somebody that knows how to pray. Amen. When the enemy comes in, yeah, the titles and the bishops and the apostles, that's great. But what you really need is a praying woman, and you need a praying man. And I believe the next day or so, God began to transform my body. I began to see the healing in my body. The, the swelling began to go down. Amen. Because I knew what the enemy meant for bad. God turned that thing around. Come on, for my good. People started speaking. I know y'all walking out and y'all walking out and it's okay and y'all heal. Um, but you need to go make sure that there's no internal damage, that there's nothing going on internally. And I believe that that day, whatever was trying to internally internalize in my body, because I had a husband that knew how to catch it. Y'all don't know want to talk, right? I didn't have to tell him. He knew how to catch it in the spirit and pray me through. And so these are the kind of people we need to be intentionally connected to. We need to be partnered to these kind of people. And I want to give him his honor and his flowers while he yet can smell them. And y'all can do that with me. Every day has not been peaches and roses. It sure have. It's been some thorns someday. And I've been a thorn in his flesh, and he's been a thorn in mine at some day, some point, and <laughs> some time. But we made it out um, all right. Someone shout, I made it out. Yeah. Out all right. I'm going to go to the word. i got a few minutes. My 30 minutes is gone because y'all took about 10, 15 minutes of that again. And I don't mind because this is God's church. Let's give all of our guests and visitors a friend. Thank y'all for coming today. Come on, let's give our new members a great God bless you. Thank you. It's good to see you, woman of God. It's good to see y'all. Good to see y'all in the back back there. Good to see y'all in the house of the Lord. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, lady. Good to see you, everyone in the house of the Lord. All of our guests, thank y'all for being. This is our vision extravaganza. You came on a great, great day. Let's give these two people who preached and taught the word of God before us. They gave y'all. That's what we call the appetizer. We support our own. We support our own. We were deciding on whether to bring a guest speaker in, and we were decided on that probably three months, maybe maybe three or four months. And Minister Jasmine kept asking, do you find anybody? you find anybody? No, we ain't find anybody. We was going to do a separate program. And the Lord said, use who you have. Amen. And so uh, we are so grateful that they ta taught a word to us that has been uplifting on division versus building up the vision of God. And they did it in their allotted time. They didn't let the Holy Spirit take them over. Amen. Y'all know how that they, they did it in their allotted time. And so I just have a few words to say. Are y'all ready for the word just for a moment? Y'all ready for the word? Okay. Build it is the topic of the word today. And I'm going to be quick and I'm going to talk fast. Amen. Build it. Someone shout build it. Whatever you have in your mind, in your life, in your, um, um, your, your brain, whatever you want to see come to pass, it's not going to be abracadabra. You're going to have to build it. And build it does not mean it is going to come up in one day. You may have to take a brick, a brick by brick and build what God has given you. A family does not come ready made. You have to build it. Come on, someone shout, build it. A vision does not come ready made. You have to build it. Minister Jasmine said, well, though the vision tarries, she gave us a key word, and that key word is what? Wait on it. Wait on it because it shall speak and it shall not lie. I want to tell you that whatever God has spoken to you concerning you, it will come to pass if you use the component of waiting on it and building while you're waiting. Waiting does not mean fold your hands. Am I talking to anybody? Waiting does not mean sit in a rocking chair. Waiting does not mean mean I'm waiting on God. No, we talked about being intentional in everything that we do. You are an intentional in coming to church today. You made plans to come. The same way with your personal vision, the same way with the vision God has given us as leaders, you are to be intentional with it. You are not to sit and not do anything. If you want to buy a home, you got to fix your credit. Y'all don't want to say amen. I told y'all what we do. I told y'all, was it Wednesday, how we say God's going to work a miracle in our credit, and we wait, and it's been 20 years, and you waiting on God. God ain't waiting on, come on, you ain't waiting on God. God waiting on you to get in contact with a credit repair person. Y'all want to talk amen, save, sanctify, Holy Ghost, filled church, and make it happen. 
Amen. You've got to build it. You've got to put your hands to work. And so I'm reminded of the Tower of, of Babel. I'm, I'm reminded of this particular tower that these group of people were building. They came together and said, let us make a tower that goes all the way to the heavens. How high is that? Which means that they literally could not reach the heavens. Come on. They could not reach God, but they had an attitude. They came together and they said, let us build something and let it go all the way up to heaven. Not only that, they wanted to make it, the Babylonians wanted to make it so high that at the top of it, they were painted blue to make it look like it was the sky. They would use these different things, which means that they were building not just an object or just a building. They were building an idol. Y'all, I y'all hope y'all can say they were building something that they could worship other than God. Not only that, to remind you that this is after the flood. This is when Noah, I mean, it has come and the God has um, brought the flood. And this is after Noah. These God is rebuilding. He tells them to multiply the earth. Come on, be fruitful and multiply. But they decide that they're going to get in one corner with one group of people and one place and that they're going to build something that was better and bigger than God. I hope y'all can catch me because I had a problem with this verse and I'm going to tell y'all within two and a half minutes what my problem was. Um, I wanted to understand why did God judge this tower? Why did God do what he done? And I gave some of y'all the answer early. Why did God come down and do what he done? Genesis 11 and 7. Um, Genesis 11 and 7. If you have it, turn there real quick. Um, it's a quick, quick verse. And, and, and this is what God is saying concerning what they are deciding to do. Because I look at it as if we're going to build and let us build together, then why did God do what he did in this verse? It just don't make sense to me. Genesis 11 and 7, and he reads, go to let us go down and, and there confound their language, which means to confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. I don't understand because the devil did not confuse them as they were building. Lucifer did not, didn't confuse them. God said, let me go down and confuse these Babylonians who have decided that they're going to build a heaven on earth. Y'all don't want to talk right. I'm going to prove something. I was confused with God if they were together, if they were operating in unity, if they were operating in one sound, why would you go down and to destroy something that they were building together as a team? I did not understand it. And God began to share with me. Let's move to the next verse. Because remember, the devil did not do this. Someone shout, God destroyed it. Listen, the word Babel, it means um, in the dictionary or in Hebrew, it means to confuse. The Webster dictionary says it's a confused noise made by a number of voices, which means it's a bunch of mambo jamble, a bunch of people talking, but come on, it's confusion. God decided to confuse their language and their communication, which lets me know even the enemy knows that when God sends confusion, the enemy knows the way to beat a church, the way to beat a marriage, the way to beat a family. I thought I had the right church. is to confuse the language. Okay, when me and Pastor Harris had to go through our marriage counseling, I'm going to let y'all digest that. Saved people. Saved people. Our number one issue was communication. Okay, y'all don't want to talk, right? The enemy was using our communication to divide us the way I communicate and the way he communicate. I communicate too much and he communicates too less. Y'all don't want to talk, right? So I want to tell you the secret weapon. Even God knew it, come on, but the devil also knows it as well, that if I can confuse their communication, if I can confuse their language, if I can confuse what she said and he said, what the pastor said, what the usher said, what the leader said, what your husband said, what the child said, if I can confuse them, I can bring division. As simple. As simple. I could not understand how I can ask my husband to turn the knob on the oven to the right or to turn the oven, not tell him how to turn it, but he would turn it left to get around to one. And I would turn it right to get it around to one. I'm like, it's quicker to take it to the right to go to the one than to go all the way backwards from T and all the way down to the one. So we will argue about how we done things and how we communicated. Y'all don't want to talk right. But the issue or the solution to the problem is the job still got done. 
So sometimes it's not how you do a thing. Come on. Sometimes it's not the way that you do the thing. It's the way that you communicate it. God came down and he confused them. He confused them, which means he confused them with noise and messing up their communications. Listen, I could not understand why God would do a thing. I'm going to tell you in just a moment, but 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, you can turn there or look at it on the screen. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion. Are are y'all confused? God confused them, but then there's a scripture that says, I know y'all wasn't going to roll. That God ain't the author of confusion. This is how we mess up scripture. He confused them, but then there's a scripture that says, For God is not the author of confusion, but peace as in all churches of the saints. So this morning when God shared this with me, I said, God, I cannot tell the people that you're the one who stopped them from building this tower and you created confusion when there's a scripture that says that you are not the author of confusion. Let me help y'all. Genesis 11 and 4. Let me give you the answer to why God is saying or did what he did. Genesis 11 and 4 said that the Babylonians said in their hearts, they said out of their mouths, let us build ourselves a city That's what they said. let us next verse next part make ourselves a name for ourselves which means God would destroy anything that is not lifting up his name but if you want your name to be bigger than his name when the church is more about the pastor than it is about the members God we will destroy it when the church is more about money than it is about me yelling we'll destroy it when the marriage is more than about coming together god will destroy it when the job becomes your idol god are y'all catching it anything that becomes an idol they did not say mother thank you for talking let us build this so souls can be saved let us be obedient so that we can be fruitful and multiply as the command that god had given us earlier part of genesis they said let us build this so we can glory let us build this come on so our names will be known across the country let us build it so everybody will be calling our names let us build it so people will see how great we are when you are building you got to make sure why are you building what is your purpose? If your purpose is more money, then the building will not succeed. If your whole purpose is to get married so you can stop having sex, you're going to have a problem in your marriage. Marriage is not a solution for your flesh problems. Because nobody that I know of, unless they are a freak of a nature, y'all read between the lines, can do that 24-7 all day. You're going to have to come out of your flesh and talk to your mate. Y'all going to have arguments. Y'all don't want to talk, right? Y'all not going to agree all the time. So it's more than that. God is looking at our heart and our intent as of why we're doing what we're doing. Why did you show up this Sunday morning? What's your real intention? What is your real motive for coming? Some of you all came because it's a extravaganza. Some of you all came just because, Lord, I just want to hear a word that's going to shift me. I want to hear a word that's going to change me. I want to be amongst the saints. I want to be in the fellowship of my brothers and in my sisters of Christ. So God destroyed something that they made an idol. So he will confuse anything that is not his will and his purpose. Because he is a God of peace. I'm answering some of y'all questions here. Which means there are two things that God will confuse or kick you out for. And that is arrogance and pride. That's two different things. I thought y'all would say amen. Lucifer got kicked out. Y'all don't want to talk right. Because of pridefulness. Because he thought he could sing so good. And matter of fact, he had so much influence that he influenced come a part of the other angels. You got to be careful of people who are always talking about themselves and their church and their 
ministry and what they got going on in their family and what's going on with their job and their education. And you got to get around people. Bless you, daughter. You got to get around people who are more focused on a unified vision that's going to add souls to the kingdom of God. We ain't coming to church to rix ourselves to get COVID-19 just to sit up here and look at you. We come on an assignment. Aha. Uh -huh. We're not impervious to COVID-19. Anybody can get it. We're not dumb or ignorant to the fact. But what we do know that if the weapon falls, it will not prosper. Hallelujah. I got about 20 people really with me. So he confused them, and God hates pride. Amen. I need y'all to understand that. Amen. Anytime a person starts saying, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have what you have. Y'all better watch those people. Bless you, Pastor. Good to see you in the back. If, if, if anyone would start saying, um, you wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for me. You wouldn't have what you have if it wasn't for me. Let me help y'all and give y'all a little Latoya sense. Let me help y'all a little Latoya sense. I can be a little stubborn um, at times and sometimes even miss my blessing because I'm willing to work for everything I get. I'm not this new generation that want people to hand them over everything. I, I don't want you to help me to the point that when I get where God told me to get, you can stand up here and say, if it had not been for me, you wouldn't be prospering like your partner. Prospering. No, baby, let me correct you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. He may have used you to give me a few dollars. He may have used you to position me and give me a platform. He may have used you to open me up, but you are not God in my life. He deserves all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. All of it. Over 40 minutes ago, y'all, took y'all sanctified religious traditional hand because Pastor Harris told y'all to do it. Amen. And y'all said, Pastor Harris, preach. Amen. Pastor LaToya, let God use you. Amen. The choir that was standing over here looked behind me because my hand was directed straight up, yeah. which means that it ain't me speaking. I'm now giving God the liberty to use me and speak. Come on, that the glory doesn't belong to me. I may get a residue of it. I may, come on, be a recipient of some of it, but all glory belongs to our God. Anyone that is prideful will find themselves falling. Anyone that thinks that it's because of them will cause their houses to be shut up and shut down. Anybody that thinks it's because you work 40 hours a day is why you're still able to pay your bills is a person that don't understand that the job ain't doing it. It's just supplying some of it. But some of us, all our bills been paid. All during the pandemic, God has given us overflow. We are not experiencing what everybody else is experiencing because we live in the place called Goshen. People in this church have gotten raises. Y'all don't want to talk, right? I'm not talking about $2. I'm talking about $4 raises where you're at. People in this place have been healed from cancer. God has changed their diagnosis. Y'all don't want to talk, right? So we ain't coming just because we need to pay the bills of this church. Because y'all don't believe it. God sent investors to this church that even if we would have closed the doors, we would not have to really close the doors. I need somebody to understand that it's not because of you as of why you are prospering. It's because of God. And when it's his vision, y'all going to help me preach today, he will make provision. When it's his idea, come on, he will allow it to come to pass. When it's his will, come on, he will allow the will in your life, things that you've laid out to come to pass. We just got to get in the mind and the heart and on the pulse beat of God. God, what is your pulse? What is your heartbeat? And God told me to tell y'all that are here today. He said, tell the people my heartbeat is souls. Anytime they bring souls, anytime souls are involved to where you can detox them and bring them closer to me, he said, that's how your house get paid. He said, anytime you bring souls, that's the forefront of the ministry. He said, that's when I'll add to the ministry. Anytime souls is the focus is when God would work miracles. I told God and I started to put it on Facebook, but I didn't think people would interpret it correctly. So I'm just going to share it now. God, make me a millionaire so I can bless other people.
Because I want to talk to some of y'all who've been helping people with your little. Uh -huh. It ain't those people that say, when I get real big, I'm going to bless you real big. No, it's the people who have helped people when they didn't have enough themselves. God says, it's your time, I'm prophesying, and it's your season to come to the forefront. It's your time. You gave and you gave out when you know you didn't have it. You left your home in ruins. Y'all don't want to talk. You did the opposite of what Elder Woods did. You didn't let the church go in ruin. You left your homes in and lack. And God says, I'm picking up all the slack for over 20 years ago. For some of y'all who are here and looking at me like a cow at a new gate, God says, I'm retroacting back and I'm about to give you back pay for your sacrifices. <laughs> I know I'm talking to the right church. Y'all don't push me. So what's amazing is <laughs> God didn't forget about what you gave, what you sold, how you helped. He put it in a vault. Y'all don't want to say amen. He put it in a treasure box. And he said, even though they don't remember what you did for them, he said, I'm a God that I remember. And I can retroact back. I can go back and I can bring it into your presence. And some of y'all are wondering why you ain't been evicted. You wonder why your house has been protected. You wonder why the peak notices have skipped over your house. We got somebody in this ministry right now. Every month their electric bill has been zeroed out. Y'all don't want to say amen. Uh-huh. God is making provision for those who made sure that his house did not go in ruins. I know I'm talking to the right church. It's amazing that this group of people were unified with the wrong purpose. I'm going to say it again for some of y'all that were still in the spirit. It's amazing that this group of people, Samantha, it's amazing, Nisi, that this group of people were unified with the wrong purpose. It's amazing people can come together in division versus building a vision. Isn't it amazing how people who don't like you get together? Y'all scared to talk. Even it, it, Isn't it even more amazing that somebody that didn't even like each other, now they like each other because they only got one thing in common, the only one thing in common is that they don't like you. Isn't it amazing that, that, that the enemies become Betsy? Because I want to let you know, some of you all, God has endowed you with so much wisdom and power and anointing that there are some people who don't like you simply because of your coat of favor, simply because of what God has positioned you, simply because of the car you drive, simply because of the house you live in, simply because of the praise that keeps coming out of your lips. You experience the voice, but you can't move it. You experience lies, but you can't move it. You experience sabotage after sabotage, but you can't move it. They they don't see how you keep making it out like a musician. But what they don't understand that there's a God that sits in me. Hallelujah. That if you listen to him, he'll make you like a miracle. He'll make you a spectacle. They'll be asking, how did you survive all of what you went through? How can you love again? How can you trust again? People will unify together for the wrong purpose. Let, let me skip here. So God says, I'm going to destroy it. They thought they was going to build something high and wonderful. Matter of fact, he even let them build it. But there's a verse that says that, that, that whatever they asked for, or whatever they planned to do in their heart, that it was going to succeed. And God saw that even in an intention that God will let you build something in your heart that is not in his heart. He'll even let you lay the foundation. He'll even let you put the bricks up. He'll even let you start moving only to get in the middle for him to look down and be like, this ain't about me. Somewhere let the purpose changed. This ain't about the kingdom. Church. Somewhere it became about buildings and money. Y'all don't want to, this ain't really about souls being saved. Somewhere in the vision, your heart changed. And when your heart changed, that's when God changes his position and he shuts it down. Yeah. Some of y'all got answers. God, God, you shut that down. God, God, you, you did that. Because it didn't involve you, it involved self-glory. 
Some people can't be trusted. I got to throw this out here for five seconds with the glory of God because they want the glory. They can't be used by God properly because the one moment he used them, they forget about where they came from. I don't care how far he take me. I won't forget the days that I had to watch my mama be on food stamps. I won't forget the days where we had to borrow water. Y'all ain't got to hear this story. But if how far he take me, I won't get so far that I'm not in touch with the people who are still stuck in poverty. I can still be like Paul. I can abound and I can be a base. I can go in and I can be out. I can talk to a doctor. I can talk to a lawyer. I can talk to a pimp. I can talk to a prostitute. You got to learn how to be versatile and very building up the kingdom of God. God first opened this church because we're going into 10 years. Our church was full of thugs. And I said, God, how are we going to build with this? They know they was thugs. They partied all night. We didn't start church to 12. I said, well, I guess that's what we're going to get. They can't get up because they drunk the next morning. So they they going to come on in at 12 o'clock. And we had to put signs up, no drinks in the sanctuary, because they had still, they drink in their water burger cups. Y'all don't know where we come from. But we didn't shoot them away. Some were still selling drugs. Y'all don't want to talk, Right? They, they, and we didn't, we didn't shoot them away. And I asked the question. I said, who is the thug? Me or you, Pastor Harris? Because how are we drawing all these kinds of people? We can't build no, no traditional church with these type of people. They don't understand hymns. They don't understand congregational songs. They don't understand when to shout or when to dance. The Holy Ghost get the moving. This is how they would dance across the floor. Hey, hey, hey. I'm from the north. <laughs> Pastor Harris said he's from the north. Holy Ghost get on, they start jigging and doing all kinds of butterflies. I'm like, Lord Jesus. But I want to let you know how you start is not how you're going to end up. And if God can trust you with who you think can't build, and some of those people are now successful and married. Y'all don't want to talk right. Some of those people are now doing well. You cannot despise the small beginnings. Listen, this is my other reference. I'm three minutes over my time. Thank you for pushing me. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. We're talking about building. But Nehemiah is, has a job that is almost 100 years of decay. 100 years of where they've been, the Jews have been exiled and pushed out. I'm not restarting. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the middle. They've been exiled and they've been pushed out over a hundred years and God puts on Nehemiah's heart to rebuild. It's the difference to build, but then it's another difference to rebuild because to rebuild, it takes more energy. Some of y'all know what it's like. God's giving you a second chance at life and you got to start over again. It, it takes more energy to rebuild because to rebuild, sometimes God will cause you to rebuild it differently than what you saw it in the past. And some people can't get past their past because they're still looking at the good old days of how it was built the first time. And God says, I've given you a new floor plan. plan. I've given you a new vision. Our, our, our old things are passed away for behold, all things are new. And sometimes we try to build with the same vision that was 20 years old. And God says, there's a new generation arising. There's a new people arising. I'm giving you a new vision. Come on. I'm giving you a new way of doing things. Open your heart to the new way so that you can rebuild. Uh-huh. I'm reminded of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. I don't know how he got in this position, but he was a cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer is not these little cute armor bearers that we have today. That carry our purse and carry our Bibles and put our iPad up here. I was do more than that. They, they, they got to know how to pray. The, the cupbearer was to drink of the drink before he gave it to the king. So if it was poisonous, the cupbearer would die before the king would die. We ain't got no real armor bearers. We don't got no real cupbearers. You want to be an armor bearer? You're supposed to take the blow. Y'all ain't want to talk right. I'm going to be the pastor's armor bearer because you want self-glory. You want to be seen. You want to seem like you're close. 
But to be close is almost you laying your life down on the line that says any demon that tries to come up against my leader, he's got to go through me first. And y'all need some prayer lawyers in your life. You need a husband that'll say, devil, you ain't coming after my wife. When we had the wreck, let me bag up because y'all get me excited. When we had the wreck, I had a dream two weeks ago. And, and, and my daughter here had a dream. And it was a lady, which was a Caucasian lady in the dream. I saw her face and she looked at me who was in the front of the altar and she said I'm going to kill you and then one of the other mothers of the church came up and looked at me in my face and said don't you let that scare you she said she has no power over what God's going to do I need you to believe God's going to do two weeks later we faced a wreck with a Caucasian lady that was a drunk driver and I knew then that the enemy wanted to take me out the wreck we both were in the wreck but most of the damage was on my side y'all don't want to talk right but I had somebody to stand in the gap and pray for me not just your pastor you need best friends that know how to pray you need teachers that know how to pray we need doctors and nurses and lawyers that know how to pray prayer ain't with a microphone prayer can even be in your car it can be even in your head god i'm at work but i can't pray like i want to pray because right now i want to tear this workstation up i want to be like but they're gonna think i'm crazy so i gotta pray in my head and i gotta maybe jerk a little bit prayer don't even gotta be all that can just be lord do it lord fix it you need somebody, Lady Marsha, to pray for you. When the enemy is praying on you, let me bag up just a little bit because it's not on my notes, but y'all are with me, so we're going to keep on moving. Uh -huh. And not only that, after God did what he did in, in our lives, uh, uh, not, not only after that, a few weeks later, an assignment came right before that happened. Our bishop said he was taking us on live to help marriages. Y'all don't want to talk right. And the wreck happened, which delayed us another month and a half. And God interpreted to me a little later. He said the enemy wanted to to kill y'all before y'all ever could open up your mouth to help another person out. If we wanted to take y'all out for the bigger assignment that was ahead, y'all don't want to talk right. Some of y'all think the enemy is after you, but baby, yes, he's after the pastor, he's after you, he's after the usher, he's after the drama, he's after the prayer warrior, he's after all of us, but we serve a God that is bigger. He's the bluff. Nehemiah builds this wall, but he had some interruptions. He was a cupbearer, but Nehemiah was intentional. He had set clear goals. Some of us can't prosper because we don't have any set clear goals. We haven't written the vision. And worked hard at making them a reality. He built this wall, but in building this wall, come on, he had a group of people in Nehemiah 4 and 6 that says, so we built the wall and all the wall was joined together unto half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Uh huh. Which means you gotta connect with people if you're building anything or rebuilding that have a mind to work. You can't work in pumps. You can't work. It's a certain attire. It's a certain position. It's a certain placement. You can't show up on the construction construction site with them flip flops on. My husband gets so upset with me. He said, "You know, we was coming around all this stuff. Why do you got your toes out?" And I'd be like, I don't want to take it. He said, you ain't come to do nothing. What if something drop on your feet and your feet all out? You got to look at people and see how they're positioned when it's time to work. You can't be laid back and looking cute when it's time to lay a brick. I need you to know how to work. If you're going to be connected to me, somebody got to get the straw. Somebody got to get the mortar. Somebody got to pick up some dirt. Somebody got to pick up a shovel. I need some people who know how to work. Not how to work, but got a mind to work. Because some of y'all show up at work without a mind. Amen. Pastor Harris said it. I'm here not to work today. I need everybody to know that. I'm here just to get a paycheck. Don't bother me. Don't come to my cubicle. Don't ask me no questions. Y'all don't know today is just not the day. I'm here working not to work. 
and you have people that show up in your life. I'm here just to be here. I'm here just to receive the manifestation and the benefits, but I'm not here to actually work. I'm not here to actually lift some burdens off of you. I just heard God say he's about to send some people in your life that's going to lift burdens. you got enough burden barriers. you got enough people hindering the vision. I'm about to send you people that's going to ask, where's the hammer at? They're going to ask, what you need me to do? They're going to ask me, what bill can I pay? They're going to ask you what God put in your heart, and they're going to just get to work. You won't have to beg them like you had to beg the first group. They're going to come in wanting, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to work outreach? What must I do to work ministry? hundred year delay he didn't get there overnight Tobias he sent ballot if you know the scripture got in his way and tried to stop the work you better know you ain't gonna work without somebody trying to stop and get in your way you better know you ain't going to build for God and the enemy not try to send some tricks and some distractions and some pitfalls to keep you from getting what God wants you to have. Sam Ballard and Tobias, they got together in unity and they begin to come against Nehemiah. The Bible says that they sent messengers over four different times telling Nehemiah, come down and meet with us. Come down and fellowship with us. Come down and hang with you. Let me tell you, when God, you are building, you don't have time to chill. When you are building, you ain't got time to hang out with people because if you open your ears, to them while you're building, they'll put something in your ear that God did not say. They will distract you. And so Nehemiah was so focused. He said, I'm not going to get to this point. I'm not here building the Jerusalem. I'm not here building the walls of Jerusalem for myself or to make a name for myself. I've got to restore a heritage. I've got to restore a family. Do I got any people in here today that know how to break the curse off of your family and say this stops here? My kids won't be in poverty. My kids won't be without. It stops right here. Nehemiah told him four different times, shout four. He said, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. They sent him a second time and he sent the message back. See, some of us, we give up on the second time. When the enemy come back, oh, well, I guess God didn't want me to do it. Yes, he did. I guess God didn't want that to happen to me. If it's God's will, it'll come to pass. No, no, no. It's the enemy that is trying to stop you. He sent him back a third time and Nehemiah said, y'all keep working. Keep working and put, come on, put something in your hand. Keep working. Put a hammer in your hand and put a sword in your next hand. And some of y'all, you got to work with people who know how to use the word of God and work at the same time. Who know how to watch you and who know how to pray. Who know how to get the job done. Who are multitasking. I can pray and I can preach. I can pray and cast the devil out. I can pray and I also can work. He said, tell them we are too busy working. We ain't got time to answer questions. We don't have time to come into conference. We don't have time to come to a meeting. And some of y'all need to tell some people as I close on today because I'm rushing right now I need you to tell somebody I don't have time to meet with you I don't have time to discuss with you what I got to do is be focused on what God has called me to do I got a great work and I cannot come down I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down God has trusted you with a plan he has trusted you with a vision he has trusted you with the lives of others and you've got to have tunnel vision you've got to look straight you can't look to the right you can't look to the left you got to be focused on what God told you to do and Nehemiah said for the fourth time tell them little rabbits that I am doing a great work and I cannot come down I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down you didn't want to talk when it was in the early stages but now you won't have conversations about nothing that makes me no good you've got to tell people I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down I'm building my family I'm building my marriage I'm building my kids I'm building my education I'm working on me I'm getting out of me. I'm doing a great work, not just for me, but I'm doing a great work for everyone that's connected. I come to tell 
tell you uh, that Nehemiah said uh, on the fifth time, uh, he said, uh, I'm doing uh, a great work uh, and I refuse. Uh, I will not uh, come down. Uh, I wish I had 50 people uh, that'll stand to your feet uh, and declare with me uh, as I close this message. Uh,
finish, huh? finish it, huh? molestation, huh? finish it, huh? prison, huh? jail sentences, huh? finish it, huh? liars, huh? finish it, huh? not in my family, huh? not in my church, huh? shout it out. rising up in your spirit. I see some old visions that got some dust on it. God said, I'm about to give it to you because they didn't finish the job, because they misrepresented you, because they didn't get it done. God said, I'm about to do it on your behalf. You're about to finish it. I need about 50 people that know that God's been good to you. I need you to open your mouth and begin to raise your hands and thank God that he's giving you the strength to finish it. I'm not going to make y'all. I'm not going to make y'all. But you're about to finish some things. I know y'all got the mask on and y'all can't act right, but you're about to finish some things that God started. You are about to finish some things in your family. That's why you can't die, Lady Davina, because you got some stuff to finish. And when you're not complete, bring it down just a little bit. When you're not complete on earth, sickness may come, but it can't take you out because you're not finished. And I want to tell some people, I don't care how far you've come or how far you've strayed. God says, I haven't forgot about you. You're about to complete some things in your life. While you're on earth, you're about to put some things together. I'm about to give you witty ideas. I'm about to give you creative inventions. I'm about to give you a new way of doing things. I'm about to give you a new vision. And when this new vision hits your spirit, don't worry about who don't get with it. Don't worry about 
about who don't co-sign with it. Run with the vision. I need about 30 believers uh, to go to dancing for 30 seconds, uh, and we're going to move on today. Is that my track? Is that my track? Y'all need to make sure that's it. You about to finish something. Yeah, that's it. We call it a 90 second Shabbat praise. Cameras. Media, get ready, because we're not ashamed, and we only got 90 seconds to do it. If it ain't in your feet, put it in your hands. If it ain't in your hands, put it in your mouth. On the count of three, I want dancers, clappers, praisers, head nodders. We're going to do it all together. One, two, one, two, three. Everybody do it now. I'm finishing something. I'm finishing something. I'm finishing something. Do it now. Thirty more seconds. I will just clap. That's all. Not asking you to do much. Twenty more seconds. I guess y'all waiting on me to move. Five more seconds. All right. And God is good. If I was you, I would break loose and forget about who I came with. Well, they praise too much. Well, we dead free. Praise him, Keosha. Praise him, Nisi. I got fire around me. All right. We good. Watch it, Shakibra. That's a free praise. That's a I'm free praise. Yeah, 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 bo Shandy. All right. Bring it down just a little bit. For time's sake, we have to move on. I want to tell those who are watching us by streaming, this is your time to give, your time to sow, your time to put your offering in the ground. Whatever God lays on your heart, be a blessing to the kingdom work and the kingdom vision. Thank you for tuning in to the Kingdom Live broadcast. For those who are here today, I want to share a word of encouragement. Bring it down a little more. Thank you for tuning in to our Kingdom broadcast. We pray and hope we have ministered a word that has touched your hearts. If you would like to grow, connect, or partner with the Kingdom Church, we would ask you to visit our website. You might want to become a member virtually. That's www.thekingdomchurch.info. And if you would like to give, we have several options and several ways you can give online located on the screen. PayPal, Givelify, or Cash App. Thank you so much for tuning into our Kingdom broadcast. And remember, you are a Kingdom citizen, so use your Kingdom privileges.